Hey everyone and welcome back to my studio. Today I want to share with you in a step-by-step -step guide how to create greetings card templates using Photoshop. Now this is the exact way that I have set up my own greetings card templates and it makes designing new cards super easy and really quick as the template has all the sizing, measurements and correct spacing already set out. So you really do just need to plug and place in new designs straight into it when you want to create a new card. Now, by the end of this particular tutorial, you will hopefully have a working template for creating and printing greetings cards at home, but it will also give you an idea of how to set up other templates for other products and print files that you'd like to create too. It's fairly straightforward and quick to do, so let's get started. Actually, before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to my lovely friend, Donna. Donna creates her own artwork and cards from her business, February Stars Arts. I'll put the links to her business below if you want to check her out. And it was actually Donna who shared this technique with me way back when I was first starting out. So thank you so much, Donna, for being so helpful and supportive and being willing to share. Now, let's head over to the computer. For this tutorial, you will need to have already purchased and installed Photoshop on your computer. And it would also help if you were kind of familiar with it too. You'll also need to have your own artwork or designs ready in a separate file to make your cards with. Now, I'm not going to go through how to prepare your artwork in this video. This is just a tutorial for setting up the template. But I do already have a video about how to turn your artwork into cards, which I will link for you up here for you to go and check out first if you'd like to see that as well. All right, once you've opened Photoshop, you're going to want to create a new file. So navigate up to New File and click. Here is where you will need to know some measurements. Now, I create cards on A5 size paper that fold in half to create an A6 card. So the size I put in here for the template will be for the size of the flat, unfolded A5 card. This is because you want to design both the front and back of the card in the same template. Photoshop has lots of pre-made sizes already set up, so you can either browse through their presets to choose what you need or enter the size directly yourself. For an A5 size card template like mine, I'll enter the sizes in pixels 2480 by 1748. Again, that's in pixels. I also make sure to name the file and add the resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Then click Create. If you want to make different size cards, then enter the measurements here for your particular card size. This tutorial works for any size, but you'll need to start off with the correct size document. The first thing we're going to do is add in some guidelines, so make sure your ruler is toggled on. If it's not, go up to View, scroll down to Rulers and toggle it on. You'll also want to have Snap toggled on too. Now we can go ahead and pull out a ruler line to mark the middle of your template. So move over to the left side ruler and click and drag the guideline out. If you've toggled on the snapping tool, then it should help you find the centre of the template and snap it into place. Let it go in place and this line will mark the centre crease line of your card. The ruler lines also show you the measurements they have while they're active, so you'll know you've hit the right mark if it's reading half of the length you typed in when creating the file. Next, I like to add in guidelines to mark the printer margins that my printer has. This number may vary depending on your printer and the settings you choose, but for me it's roughly 35 pixels from the paper's edge. Now here's a little tip, if you're struggling to get the guidelines to the mark you want, zoom in on your canvas first, then pull the guidelines out. Being zoomed in means that the guidelines are much easier to control. Now that you've got some guidelines in place, it's time to add in the area for the front of your greetings card. Navigate over to the rectangular marquee tool and select. We're going to draw a rectangle between the guidelines on the front of the card. Using the guidelines as a guide, click and pull the rectangle to fit. With this area now selected, choose white on your colour wheel, select the paint bucket tool then create a new layer. With this new layer highlighted, use the paint bucket tool to fill in the selected area you just created. If you have a white background layer toggled on like I do, then it will look like nothing has happened. 
but if you toggle off the background then you'll see you'll have just created a filled in shape in the front of your card. Go ahead and rename this layer. I'm calling it Card Front. Then duplicate the layer for the card back. You'll want to toggle off the background layer again so you can see and move it over to the back of the card. Next, we want to turn these two new areas into smart objects. So navigate over to the card front layer, right click and scroll down to convert to smart object and click. Repeat this for the card back layer. Creating a smart object might not seem like it's done anything at first, but smart objects open up a separate canvas which allows you to make full adjustments like adding new layers, changing features, adding filters and text, all while keeping the original image file protected. To access your new smart object layer, double click on the smart object thumbnail, not on the layer itself, but on the smart object icon. This will open up a new tab, which is the exact dimensions of the smart object you just created. I've gone ahead and opened up the smart object for the card back. I've also got rid of my guidelines as I know the border measurements are correct for my printer, but I'd suggest keeping them until you've completed a card design and done a few test prints of your own as they may need to be adjusted for your printer and settings. Now that you're in the smart object for your card back, you can go ahead and add in the information that you would like to be printed on the backs of your greetings cards. For example, you could give each card design a name, say where your cards are printed and what materials you use, add your business logo and website details too. Once you've done formatting this to how you'd like, go ahead and save it by going to File and Save. Now, when you go back to the card template tab, you'll see your additions have been added here too. You can now go ahead and add in the design you want for the front of your card using these same steps. Open up the card front smart object and add in your design. I'll use this squirrel design of mine as an example. I've already created this design in another file, so I navigate to that file and duplicate the design into the card front canvas. As you can see, the design is much bigger than the card front, but this is what you want. It's easy and safe to reduce the size of a design without it losing print quality. You'll have to adjust it to fit how you would like it to look in the Smart Object Canvas, as that is exactly how it will look on the card template. Because you have already worked out your printer margins, it's safe to use up all the space you'd like in the Smart Object, as the main template will always stay the same. Once you're happy with your design, click Save and it will now be shown on the card template. If you want to make adjustments to it once it's saved, that's no problem at all. Just go back into the smart object and change whatever you need to from there. Always remember to save the smart object after each change as this is how it will show up in the template. Here's an example of what will happen if the image you import into the card template is too small. Increasing the size of any non-vector artwork makes it lose its quality, which means the printed card will come out blurry. So make sure you create large artwork files before trying to make any products with them. This layout that we have just created is for a portrait card. You might also want to make a template for a landscape card, as the direction of the design needs to be correct to allow the landscape card to display properly when it's folded. Whatever design or template you decide to make, remember to save your work. Once you've created your first greetings card design, I suggest that you do a test print to make sure that the front and back of the card are centered correctly on the cardstock that you have. That way, any tweaks that you need to make can be made on just the one template.
once you're happy with how the layout comes out when printed, you can save and duplicate the template as many times as you want for your different card designs. I save different templates for each collection of greetings cards that I design. Within each card collection template, I have the different designs saved within the smart object. That way it's easy for me to find and create the design I need for printing. So there you have it. That is the way that I create my greetings card templates using Photoshop. I hope that that has been helpful for you and shown you an easy way to create and save greetings card designs of your very own. Please do let me know in the comments below if you try it yourself. And thank you always for being here and I hope to see you in the next one.